Have you noticed that one editing style is taking over social media? Those videos are pulling hundreds of thousands of views. It's like a glitch in the algorithm. But here is the secret. It's much easier than it's look like. In this video, we are gonna recreate this Houston called viral editing style. Completely from scratch. We will break down 3D camera movement, high quality motion graphics, and advanced scene setups, step by step. And to make it even easier for you, all the assets and the project file are linked down below below in the description. You can download them for free. Now that you know what we are creating, let's jump straight into the project file and start to build this edit from scratch. First, we will create a new composition with a height of 1080 and wide of 9020. We start by building the first background. Create solid, apply the grid and ramp effect to it, change it to radial ramp, set the start color in the center and the end color to the outer edges. Set the end color to black and the start color to dark red. Next, create another solid and apply the Venetian blinds effect to it. Set the transition composition to 25%, then duplicate it. For the duplicate, rotate it by 19 degrees, which will create small circles. Add another gradient ramp and set it to radial ramp. As before, place the start color in the center and the end color in the outer edges. Set the start color to dark red and the end color to red black. Now you can see the points that are created. Add another solid and apply the grid effect to it. Increase the anchor to a reasonable size. Change the color to dark red and reduce the opacity of this solid to 20%. Now the background is ready. Create a rectangle and place it in the center. Set the roundness to 40. Apply the four color gradient effect and color the rectangle with various shades of gray. By setting each point to a different light gray. Add an adjustment layer and apply the Venetian blind effect to it. Setting it to 25%. Precompose both of the adjustment layer and the shape layer. Inside the precompose, change the angle of the Venetian blinds to 50 degrees and set the wide to 15. Reduce the opacity to 30%. Outside the precompose, add the inner glow, set it to a gray and adjust it so that it starts out of the edges. Add the text and write item in bold font. I use Montserrat bold. Align the text in the center of the rectangle. Set both of the text and the precompose layer to 3D and link the text to the precompose. Now we have create a 3D card. Move the card deeper into the composition. Duplicate the text and rectangle to create a new card. Adjust the rotation as needed and position it at the top right. Change the text to exposed and center it in the rectangle. Duplicate the card again. Move it downward and adjust the rotation. Change the text to unseen truth and center it in the rectangle. Move the card slightly lower and adjust its position as desired. Duplicate the card once more, move it to the bottom left corner and change the text to encrypted. Center the text in the rectangle and adjust the depth, rotation and position to your liking. Finally, duplicate the card one last time, move it to the top left corner and change the text to reveal. Center the text to adjust the rotation and move the card higher. I recommend adjusting the depth of each card. Great, now we have arranged all the cards. Next, we will add text and write what to do. The font for the text is Alex Brush, a free font as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. We will reduce the fill of the text and apply stroke of 0.3. Position the text in the center of the screen, duplicate it and for the second text write really see and position it below the first text. Move both text below all layers and turn them into 3D. Push them off into the horizon so they are behind the first card and increase the scale so they go behind the screen. Arrange them evenly on the screen and reduce their opacity to 40%. Add a one node camera. Set a keyframe at 2 seconds and another keyframe at 0 seconds. With the camera position at the bottom left corner, add another keyframe at 4 seconds, where the camera moves deeper toward to the furthest card. Arrange the keyframes in the graph so that the movement flows smoothly. And that's the result of the first part. 
At 4 seconds, cut all the layers and delete everything after that. Insert the AI image I created and already separate the character from the background. Set both layers to 3D, move the character along the Z axis to fit the screen size and then increase the background scale to the same size. What happens is that the depth gap is created between them. Cut and delete the part of the irrelevant layers. Now take the popper tool and pin marks along the character. This creates keyframes at each of the pins we placed. Move them to 7 seconds mark, then go to the 4 seconds mark and add more keyframes, slightly lowering each pin. This creates movement for the character. Add text and write true identity. Center the text on the screen, move it behind the character layer and raise the text almost above the character's head. Add glow and chromatic aberration to the text. And of course, delete the unnecessary parts of the layer. Duplicate the text and change the second text to another layer question mark. Make the text slightly smaller and place it in the center of the screen. Place this layer above the character layer, then add a red rectangle layer behind it and delete the unnecessary part of the layer. Apply the toggle and displace effect to the rectangle and set both of the amount and the complexity to 10. Add an internet animation to the first text via Animation Composer 3. Move the second text and the rectangle a bit to the right and add an internet animation for the second text as well. Use the Shape tool to create two triangles that cover the first third of the screen. Add keyframes to the path property of both shapes. Move a bit forward in the timeline and stretch the edges of the shapes to the left side of the screen. Move forward again and stretch them further. Then go a bit farther and use the shape tool to add two more points, closing the shape to cover the screen. Move the shape layer below the text in the highlighting rectangle. Go a few frames before the first keyframe and shrink all the shapes points into a single small dot. This creates a clean transition. Make sure to trim unnecessary part of the layer. Add a one node camera and create a keyframe at 5.5 seconds, then go to the 4 seconds and zoom the camera in the character. Open the graph and make a dramatic zoom. Convert the true identity text to 3D and trim the unnecessary parts. Go to the end of the animation and reduce the opacity of the another layer text to 0%. Adding the keyframe, go a few frames back and set the opacity to 100%. Repeat this process several times to create a text flick here. Trim and delete the unnecessary parts of the layer. Bring in the 3D mask and delete any unwanted layer areas. Recompose the mask. Make sure to switch back to classic 3D. Inside the pre-compose, the keyframes are the first second for the X and the Z rotation. Move forward and adjust the X and the Z rotation as needed to get the desired effect. Center the character on the screen, apply the same flicker effect you used on the text to the pre-compose mask. At 8 seconds, add position keyframe, go to the beginning of the text and move it downward. Use the graph to make a steep rise. Add an image of barcode, trim the layer and place it below the mask pre-compose. Set both the barcode and the pre-compose to 3D. Move the barcode to the bottom of the screen and scale it down. Create position keyframe at 7.5 seconds and at the start of the barcode layer. Move the barcode slightly downward, also keyframe the opacity at 7.5 seconds and set it to 0%. In the position graph, create a sharp movement. Add a text layer, trim the unnecessary parts and type the word mask. Scale up the text and move it above the mask. Duplicate the text and place the copy in the center of the mask. Duplicate it again and move the new copy below the mask. Move all the text layers below the mask layer. Create the opacity keyframes at the start of each text layer and apply the same flicker effect as before but make it slightly lower. At around 7 seconds, add the position keyframes to the text layers. At the start of the layers, move the text slightly downward. Select all the position keyframes and use the graph to create the shape rise. 
offset the timing of the text layer slightly to create non-uniform flickering. Convert all text layers to 3D. To create a sense of depth in the scanner, decrease its Z depth and increase its scale. Add a one node camera and delete all unnecessary layers. Create position keyframes at the start and at 9 seconds. Go back to the first keyframe and pull the Z axis of the camera back into the depth. In the graph, create a fast in and fast out motion. Now, let's create a screen flicker. Add a new solid, trim the layer, hold halt and click on the opacity stopwatch. To enable expression, type the following expression. Wiggle 15 10 minus 99. Add glow and chromatic aberration to the text layer. Copy and paste those effects to the rest of the text layers. And here is the result. Add a shape layer in form of circle and center it in the screen. Delete the part of the layer before 9 seconds. Precompose the layer. Inside the precomposition, convert the shape layer to 3D. Change from basic 3D to advanced 3D. Adjust the ellipse path size to 2. And in the geometry option, set the bevel style to convex and increase it to 100. Enlarge the circle inside the precomposition and then shrink it back outside. Create a keyframe for the position at 11 and a half seconds and place the circle on the left side, slightly below the mask. Go to 9 seconds and move the circle to the bottom right corner. With the shape tool, create a point halfway through and stretch it to create a wavy shape. We do this so the balls move in a natural and smooth way. Go to the graph and adjust them so their movement is smooth. Create a keyframe for the scale at the point where the position keyframe ends. Move forward a little bit and increase the ball size significantly, filling the screen with the ball's color. Adjust the graph to create fast entry, cut out all layers after this point except for the ball layer. Add the text box and write mask. Increase the text size so that it nearly fills the screen and move it upwards. Add a gradient ramp and set the bottom layer to red and black and the top layer to dark red. Duplicate the text and write not just an object on the duplicate. Decrease the text size a lot and place it under the mask. Using the shape tool, draw a straight line through the middle of the text, move the shape layer below the text and adjust the thickness of the lines so it covers the text. Add turbulent displace effect to the shape layer, set the complexity to 10 and the amount to 6. Add a trim path to the shape layer, create a keyframe for the end at the beginning of the layer, set it to 0% and half second later, set the end to 100%, adjust the graph to create a fast entry. Move the shape layer and the text layer slightly forward. Add entrance animation to the mask task via animation composer. Apply an entrance animation to the second text and shape layer via opacity from 0% to 100%. Convert all three layers to 3D. Add chromatic aberration to the mask task. Apply glow to the shape layer and add glow to the second text. Using the position Gimzo, move all layers to the left, add a text box, write tough, and remove the irrelevant part of the layer. Increase the text size and position it centrally. Create a red rectangle with a stroke of 20 and place it around the text. Remove the unnecessary part of the layer and adjust the roundness to 60. Add chromatic aberration to the rectangle, convert both of the shape layer and the text to 3D and move both of them slightly downwards. Add glow to the shape layer. Duplicate the text and the shape layer, attach the shape layer to the text and move both slightly to the right and upwards. Change the text to intention and position it well within the rectangle. Apply entrance animation to both text and shape layers via opacity with the first keyframe at 0% and the second at 100%. Move the second text and the shape layer slightly using the position Gimzo. Move all layers downward, create a red circle and remove the irrelevant part of the layer. Precompose the shape layer. Inside the precomposition, convert the shape layer to 3D and switch from classic 3D to advanced 3D. In the ellipse path, set the size to 2, change the bevel style to convex, and set the bevel depth to 100. Create a square, set the roundness to 60, and make it 3D. Adjust the extrusion depth so the square is even, and change the bevel style to convex. Change the color to black, increase the specular highlights to 100%, and set the metal to 0%. Create white circle, convert it to 3D, Increase the extrusion depth slightly and change the bevel style to convex. Increase the specular highlights to 100% and set the metal to 0%. 
arrange the position and rotation of the shape layer, duplicate all the shape layers, and change the colors of the duplicates. Now scatter all the shapes across the screen. One second from the start, create the keyframes for the rotation of yeah, all the okay. shapes, go back to the first second and change the rotation of the shapes. Return to the main screen and add a text box. Cut out the irrelevant part of the layer and write shape in the text. Increase the text size and position it at the top between the shapes. Duplicate the text and write hour. Position the duplicated text in the center of the screen between the shapes. Convert both of the text to 3D. Duplicate the text again, write perception and move the duplicated text down between the shapes. Apply an entrance animation with opacity to the texts. Move forward a bit, create a keyframes. Go back to the start and reduce the opacity to 0%. Move a step forward and create keyframes for the position of all the texts. Go back to the start and lower the position of the texts a little. Go to the position graph and make it go up sharply. Add spacing between the beginning of the text. Add one node camera and cut out the irrelevant part of the camera layer. Make two cuts in the camera layer, so there is a camera layer for each of the three last animations. In the middle of the first camera layer, create a keyframe for the position. Then, at the start of the layer, create another keyframe and move it along the Z axis. Go to the graph and create a fast entry. At the start of the second camera layer, create a keyframe for the position, move the camera a few steps forward, and then move the camera a bit more forward. Go to the graph and apply it easy ease. At the start of the third camera layer, create a keyframe for the position, move a bit forward, and then move the camera upwards. Go to the graph and create a fast entry. This is the last part of the animation. Shrinking the composition to the end of the animation, add a transition between the first and the second animation, enlarge the transition, and set it to screen mode. And just like that, the edit is officially complete. After hours of editing, the results are insane. Check this out. What do we really see? Is it what's in front of our eyes or what's hidden? What lies behind the mask? Is it truly an identity or just another layer? We cover to hide, to protect, but sometimes to reveal. A mask is not just an object. It's a thought, an intention, a way to shape our perspective. If you made this far, thank you so much for watching until the end. It really means a lot. All the project files and the assets are linked down below in the description. So feel free to grab them. If you enjoyed the tutorial, let me know down below. And while you are there, might as well subscribe, right? <laughs> With that being said, I will see you in the next video.